Hey guys, my name is Dr. Cavo and I'm a physician that specializes in nutritional medicine. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why you gain weight. Right, so I'm going to describe a situation and we'll see if it's you. Basically, there's certain people that can eat an entire pizza and not gain any weight at all. And then there are other people that just look at pizza and gain five pounds. Is that you? Because if it is, the next things I'm going to talk about will be really helpful for you to understand. So here's the thing, I need to explain to you why some people can eat anything and other people have to be so careful with regards to what they eat, otherwise they just have very quick weight gain. And it re really boils down to something called insulin, which is a hormone that you secrete from your pancreas. And to understand what's going on, we have to understand what happens with insulin. I'm extremely visual, so I wanna draw out for people what this looks like. And I think when I sort of break it down in a sort of cartoon sort of sketch, you'll really get an understanding as to why some people can eat lots of pizza and other people can't. So when somebody eats, I'm, I'm just picking on pizza, but when somebody eats a food that's higher in carbohydrate, we have to understand what happens to that. So I'm just gonna draw a very, very simple cartoon and we're gonna pretend that's a blood vessel. And right next to this blood vessel are gonna be a couple cells. So it's a really small blood vessel that's called a capillary and it's where exchanges occur between what's going on in the blood and what's happening in the cell. So if you were to eat a piece of pizza and after it gets digested into the bloodstream, it enters your blood as glucose molecules. Okay, so glucose goes up when you eat a food that has higher carbohydrates in it. And the response from an elevated glucose is the secretion of a hormone called insulin from your pancreas. Now, let's go back to the person that can eat an entire pizza and not gain any weight. If that person and you were to sit down and have the exact same slice of pizza, the same size and have the exact same uptake of sugar from that pizza, the response that they might have from the insulin from this glucose load might look something like this. That much insulin to cover that much sugar load. If you have a situation where you're secreting too much insulin for a given sugar load, and that's called insulin resistance, then you would eat that slice of pizza, the same slice the other person ate, but your secretion of insulin would be totally different. You'd end up making a lot more insulin to cover that sugar load. And this is where the story starts to become kind of interesting. Because the insulin is a hormone, and hormones are what tells the cells what's going on in the bloodstream. So the insulin hits these receptors on the cells that are specific for insulin, and that causes the cell to start to change. And one of the things that happens at the cellular level is a gate opens up in the membrane of the cell. It's called a channel. And it's through that channel that glucose moves out of the blood and into the cell. That's how diabetics control their blood sugar when they take insulin is the insulin is attaching itself to these receptors that are specific for insulin and that causes gates or channels to open up in the membrane of cells and then the glucose goes into the cell. Now once the glucose is inside the cell the insulin turns on some machinery into the cell and so glucose can be broken down into carbon dioxide and water, which are two smaller molecules, or glucose can be built into larger molecules like glycogen or triglycerols. And we're not gonna get into glycogen today, but I'm gonna talk about triglycerols. So inside the cell, the insulin is sending a message to make these structures larger. Okay, so the glucose comes into the cell courtesy of the insulin, which is now very, very high after having this pizza, and you start to make larger molecules. And over time, what that means to the cell is the flux of things being built outpaces that which is getting broken down. And so the cell ends up getting larger 
as it gets filled up with these fatty acids. Now, if you look at the cells and the difference in the sizes, you can see this cell is much bigger than this cell, which means the surface area on the cell is also substantially increased. That means you can put on more receptors, which were on the membrane of the cell, and all of those receptors with high levels of insulin will get tagged, and the result will be more of those glucose channels opening up in the membrane of the cell. And when that happens, it's pretty obvious what goes on now. The glucose starts to really pick up its drive into the cell and the cell starts to make even more of these fats. And that's where people end up getting more and more heavy with regards to making more and more fatty acids rather than breaking them down. Insulin is like one of the most powerful anabolic hormones the body makes. And everybody's heard of anabolic hormones before in one way or another, like anabolic steroids or something that bodybuilders may have used way back when, and that would build muscles. So anabolic hormones are builders, and insulin is an anabolic hormone, and therefore it's going to build things. It's going to make people gain weight. And at the end of this story, and my conclusion is this, after time goes by and the sugar that was in your bloodstream from the pizza that you ate goes into the cell, you end up with a relatively low blood sugar, but you still have elevated insulin levels. And so here's the situation where the energy that you have inside the cell is kind of locked there because the insulin is telling the cell to continue to store the energy. And so what happens then, in a very simple sort of uh, fashion for you to understand, is the insulin goes back to a place in the appetite center of the brain to stimulate the brain to be what? To be hungry. And what you're hungry for is something like this, which will go back to increasing your blood sugar because the energy that your body has is depleted. And so that's kind of a circle or a, uh, a cycle that I think is important for people to understand and better appreciate who have this uh, diagnosis of insulin resistance or high levels of insulin. It's actually hyperinsulinemia. And you can actually be tested for this um, situation to see whether or not it's going on. It's pretty easy blood work. You can get a fasting insulin level or um, have a comprehensive metabolic panel to look at your glucose and also your free insulin. And you can actually do a pretty cool math equation to figure this all out. You definitely want to have somebody that specializes in this sort of looking at the um, lab values that you get and helping to understand the diagnosis. But by far and away, this is probably one of the most common causes for people to gain weight that is completely misunderstood or not appreciated by um, most people. So hopefully this helps you understand a little bit more about why you gain weight. We can talk more about other things in the future. This is Dr. Cavo, and it's been a lot of fun telling you guys about this.